The World Bank has cut its global growth forecast for this year, warning of the, quote, sharpest economic slowdown in 80 years. The 4.1% economic growth that it predicted has been slashed to 2.9%. And the problem is being exacerbated in America because the Biden administration would rather pursue its longstanding leftist agenda, killing fossil fuels, for example, over helping the economy by, say, expanding new oil and gas leases rather than shutting them down, which is what they did. Everyone knows that the economy is in bad shape. Everyone knows that Biden isn't helping. And even Biden's own spokesman can't defend it. What we have seen is historic numbers. Is a, we are in a historic uh, uh, place in history, uh, historic place right now, as we, have, uh, as we look at uh, where we are with the economy. Very, very different than where we were a year ago. And that is because of what the president has been able to do with a, with a comprehensive plan to get people vaccinated, with a plan to get people back to work. We are in an historic moment in history, historically. Karine Jean-Pierre is no historian, but she is right about that, historically. We are in a very different place than we were a year ago. Last year, when Biden took office, gas was half the price that it is right now. We were not engaged in an unnecessary proxy war with a nuclear petrostate raising energy prices around the world. Grocery prices were not through the roof. We are in a very different place economically than we were last year. And the difference is entirely bad. It's worse. It's worse now. Everyone knows it, but not everyone is willing to admit it or do the things that they would need to do to fix it. What we're trying to say, what I'm trying to say to you is that the economy is in a better place than it has been historically. And so we feel here at this administration and other experts as well, is that we feel that we are in a good position to take on inflation. We are in a good position to really start uh, really working on uh, lowering prices. That just isn't true historically or, or presently. That just isn't true. And it isn't just not true. It's a lie. These people know that the economy is in terrible shape. They just don't care. They care in the sense that it might hurt their short-term chances in the elections, but they don't care enough to give up their radical long-term agenda. That's what the Democrats are thinking on the economy. That's what they're thinking culturally on transing the kids. That's what they're thinking on criminal justice, letting all the criminals out of jail. It's true on every political front. The Democrats are taking a short-term hit right now, which is all well and good, but they're only doing it because they think it will help them win the long-term war. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment yesterday is from Christian Thompson, who says, we're going to need The Daily Wire to make a new documentary for everything the liberals can't define. Next up, what is democracy? <laughs> what is a democracy? Well, a democracy is a form of government that identifies as a democracy. Yeah, but what is that? These days, it's actually, a, it's a perfect analogy. That's a very astute comment because just as a man now can identify as a woman, so too an oligarchy can identify as a democracy. And that's what the Democrats, they say, our sacred, sacred democracy of us totally crooked, generally unaccountable elites. That's, we, need, we need some new representatives, if you ask me. I wish we could hire them through ZipRecruiter. You, you can certainly improve your business personnel through ZipRecruiter. Right now, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. There are so many things to do during the summer. You want to be as free as you possibly can to enjoy them. So if you're a business owner, do you want to be wasting your time sorting through tons of unqualified candidates' resumes when you could be sitting by the pool, sipping a nice pina colada, going to visit a friend, taking your family on a nice little vacation, go cooking hot dogs on the 4th of July? That's what you want to be doing. That's why you need ZipRecruiter to find great candidates. ZipRecruiter does the work for you, and right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. They use powerful technology to find and match the right candidates with your job. 
They've got a complete suite of tools, makes it easy to filter, review, rate your candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's why ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site based on G2 satisfaction ratings as of January 1st, 2022. Soak up all that summer has to offer. Let ZipRecruiter do the work for you. The URL is ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. That's where you can try it for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Canada, W-L-E-S. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. People are really hurting. Gas prices are through the roof. My wife bought eggs the other day, and my wife does like fancy eggs. She wants her eggs to have gotten a manicure and a pedicure and a college education. That's true. But still, there's a limit to how expensive eggs should be, or so I thought. For 18 eggs, do you know how much she paid? She paid almost $9. That is criminal. That something has gone seriously wrong. Milk prices are through the roof, not even just for the fancy college-educated milk, but for all the milk. It's, th- it's insane what people are paying right now. And it's especially true when it comes to energy. So we've got to do something to fix it. If I were president right now, this isn't very complicated. I would, well, the first thing I would do is not do what Joe Biden did, namely restrict new oil and gas leases. We, when he came into office, he said, okay, no more new oil and gas leases. It's gonna, it's, what's that going to do? It's going to raise the cost of energy. What does he do? He starts killing oil pipelines. What does he? And they say, well, the oil pipelines, they weren't going to go into effect for a year or two. Okay, well, here we are. We're a year or two out. I sure wish we had an oil pipeline right now. Then what does he do? He gives the green light to Vladimir Putin's oil pipeline so that that gives Vladimir Putin the opportunity to invade Ukraine. And what does that do? It drives energy prices up around the world. This isn't extremely complicated stuff. There are really basic things that you could do right now, but the Democrats don't want to do that because it it cuts against their much longer term global warming agenda to get America off of the types of energies that they hate and onto the kinds of energies that they love and the kinds of energies that line their own pockets. What does the Democratic Senator Debbie Stabenow say? Her constituents are pleading. They're saying, we can't fill up at the pump. We're not going to be able to to heat our homes. We're not going to be able to pay for certainly air conditioning in the summer. And what about the heat in the winter? And she says, well, dummies, why don't you just go buy an electric car? I do have to say just on the issue of uh, uh, gas prices, after waiting for a long time uh, to have enough chips in this country to finally get my electric vehicle, I got it uh, and drove it from Michigan to here uh, this last weekend and went by every single gas station and didn't matter how high it was. And so I'm looking forward to the opportunity for us to move to vehicles that aren't going to be dependent on the um, whims of the oil companies and the uh, international markets. People accuse Marie Antoinette of having said, let them eat cake when she was told that the the peasants didn't have any bread to eat. It's not true, by the way. It was just completely made up. She never said that. Marie Antoinette, one of the most unfairly maligned characters in history. But, But nevertheless, Debbie Stabenow really did say that. Debbie Stabenow really did say, yeah, people are really, really upset about gas. Well, the other day I'm tooling around in my nice new electric car and I didn't have to worry about any of those gas stations. So, you know, look, you're having trouble affording gas, which is now about $5 a gallon on average nationwide in some places. It's going to go to seven or $8. Wait, you're having trouble paying for that? Buy a $50,000 car, idiot. What's, What's wrong with you? Just go buy a Tesla. You don't even need the Model X. You can get the Model S. Okay, it's not that expensive. You don't have to spend $96,000. You can spend $48,000 plus tax. Okay, so it's a little over 50. What's the big deal? Stop complaining. That way you don't need to worry about paying $5 a gallon for gas. That's what they, and they they really mean that. It's not just that they're so out of touch that they keep stepping in it. They, They keep putting their foots in their mouths. They genuinely believe this is a great opportunity to get people off of old fashioned cars and get them to go buy Teslas. Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary, says that this is a great opportunity to make America more dependent on solar and wind energy. Given the global nature of these markets, it's virtually impossible for us to insulate ourselves from shocks like the ones that are occurring uh, in Russia uh, that move global oil prices. And look, over the medium term, 
the critical thing is that we become more dependent on the wind and the sun that are not subject to geopolitical influences and passing clean um, energy credits that will boost um, non-renewables um, is, I think, really, really critical to, um, to, to, to addressing climate change and our uh, energy costs for households well, going Madam Secretary. forward. There it is. Do you see how she slipped up? She's going on and on. For whatever reason, the Treasury Secretary is just going on and on about what American energy policy should be. And she keeps saying it's all about solar. It's all about solar. It's all about solar. It's all about wind. And then she says it's really important for addressing climate change. I mean the energy crisis. <laughs> you see, because you're right. If, if you believe that the sun monster is going to kill us all, if you believe the world is going to end in 10 years. Now, I guess it's a shorter time frame than that because they made the prediction some years ago now. If you believe that oil and gas are going to kill us all, if you believe, if you believe all the premises of, of global warming, then, and if you believe that the solar panels being manufactured in China are not worse for the environment than fossil fuels are, which by the way, that's a pretty open debate. But if you believe all of that, then yeah, okay, you think it's really important to move to solar, but not to solve the energy crisis solar is not as efficient. You think it's important to move to solar so that we save the world from the horrible rising temperatures and the sea levels. It's not to solve the energy crisis. They're doing a little bit of a bait and switch here. They're saying, yeah, you hate those high gas prices. Well, we're going we're gonna to fix that problem with solar energy. But the problem they're fixing is not your high gas prices or, or energy prices broadly. The problem that they are fixing is global warming in their views. And Janet Yellen is, it does not have a lot of credibility here. She's the treasury secretary, but she's been dead wrong in a lot of her predictions. She was dead wrong about her predictions on inflation. Was it a mistake, Madam Secretary, to downplay this inflation risk? Did that contribute to the problems we're all seeing right now? Well, um, look, I, I think I was wrong then about um, the path that inflation um, would take. As I mentioned, there have been unanticipated and large shocks to the economy that have boosted uh, energy and food prices and um, supply bottlenecks. So she, good on her for admitting that she was wrong. A lot of politicians refuse steadfastly ever to admit that they're wrong. But they, she was wrong. And the Biden administration broadly was wrong in their economic predictions. And so I don't really see why we should believe them now. And when they tell us now, don't worry, this is just a blip. The economy is actually in good shape. We just got to make some more investments into solar energy. We've just got to invoke the Defense Production Act for some reason to, to give more money to solar energy companies and line the pockets of Democrats. We've got, don't worry, and then it'll all work out fine. I don't see any reason to believe it. Every time they've told us that the situation is going to get better, things have gotten much, much worse. Build Back Better has completely gutted the economy and shaken the world order. We're, we're what, a year and a half into this thing? How much, how much further can we fall? Joe Biden is screwing up royally. And the, the reason that we're dealing with a terrible economy right now and a threat to the world order, and record high immigration, and crime spiking everywhere. The reason we're witnessing this national implosion right now, and everything getting much worse, is so that we could avoid all those mean tweets. Because Donald Trump was a mean guy, and, and Joe Biden's a nice guy, and he's going to return us to, to be a good civil nation. He said he was running to restore the soul of the nation. And this is a point I, I have to get to, I have to address, because beyond all of the policy failures of Biden, this, I think, is the biggest lie about the man, that he's just a nice old guy. He's not a nice guy. He's a bad guy. He's a mean, nasty, dishonest, bad guy. And that's an occupational hazard of politics, but it's especially pronounced with Joe Biden. And you see the man's character on one issue in particular that happens to have cropped up in the news again. Joe Biden will not acknowledge one of his grandchildren. This is a national scandal, and this should be a much bigger deal. This really tells you something about his character. He steadfastly refuses to acknowledge his granddaughter that was conceived by his son Hunter and a stripper, and because of the inconvenient facts of this conception and then birth, 
Joe Biden, he'll hang up stockings at the White House for all of his grandchildren, except for this one grandchild. And now this grandchild is receiving threats from her mother's ex-fiance. Uh, the, the mother, uh, London Roberts, I believe her name is, was engaged to this guy, and the guy is a total nut. He's a former amateur MMA fighter, and now he's threatening Roberts and Roberts' daughter, Joe Biden's granddaughter, and threatening to take the daughter, and Roberts is going and trying to get court orders against this guy, and he's apparently banging on the door in the middle of the night, and he carries a firearm, and Roberts just said that she was cowering with her daughter behind a couch with a gun waiting to, I mean, it's a really bad situation. And now a friend of Roberts is speaking out about this, because for a while I thought, look, maybe Joe Biden actually is in touch with the granddaughter, but he's keeping it kind of secret, maybe to protect her privacy or something. But apparently that's not the case. A friend of Roberts said, the president frequently talks about his love and pride for his grandchildren, but if he really cared for every member of his family, he would have done something by now. The Secret Service would act at the drop of a dime if someone threatened any of the other Biden kids, but it's like, this granddaughter, Navy Joan, doesn't matter. And the, the gal, Roberts, is doing everything she needs to to keep her daughter safe with, without the Biden's help. So not only is Biden refusing to act, this is the most powerful man in the world. He's not even acting to protect his poor little grandchild when the little granddaughter is being threatened by some lunatic guy. He's not even acknowledging her. Imagine you're this little girl. This is, I don't like Joe Biden and I'm willing to take a lot of political shots at him, but take your politics out of it for a second. Let's say you're a Democrat. Let's say you voted for Joe Biden. Just take your politics out of it for a second. Just look at it as a granddaughter and a grandfather. You know that your grandfather is the most powerful man in the world, the president of the United States. And you grow up knowing that he won't even acknowledge you because he's ashamed of you because he doesn't like the facts of your birth. He doesn't like that you're around. He finds you inconvenient. It's a nasty, awful thing to grow up with. And he's a nasty, awful man for doing it. It's as simple as that. And, and especially cruel in this case because the girl apparently faces a very credible threat to her life and, and to the life of her mother. No acknowledgement whatsoever. Nice, that's nice guy Joe Biden. At least we don't have the mean tweets. Donald Trump is mother freaking Teresa compared to this guy. It's so, it's so disgusting. Speaking of children, speaking of inconvenient conceptions and births, there's a pro-life pregnancy center in Buffalo, New York that has just been attacked. You, if you listen to this show, if you listen to a handful of conservative outlets, you will know that there have been major attacks, arson, vandalism on pro-life pregnancy centers in recent weeks. And now there's another one. This pro-life group, Compass Care, was attacked early uh, yesterday morning. Uh, this is all about the potential overruling of Roe v. Wade, which could come out now anytime. Uh, vandals broke windows and they set fire to the medical office at, Com at Comfort Compass Care. They wrote graffiti with the words, Jane was here. This is the phrase used by Jane's Revenge, which is a leftist terrorist group that attacks pro-life pregnancy centers. They also took credit for a firebombing at a pro-life center in Madison, Wisconsin last month. You won't hear about this in the liberal media, but, but it, it ties into something we were talking about yesterday, which is the libs do not really care about the people that they are pretending to care about. The libs care about ex exploiting people and situations to advance an agenda that they already had before the people that they're pretending to care about were involved. So a, a good example of this would be energy we were just talking about. The libs want to push solar panels. Pushing solar panels is not going to bring energy costs down anytime soon. The libs are not going to do the things that they need to do to bring energy costs down soon, namely open up oil and gas drilling. They're not going to do that, but they are going to exploit the pain that people are feeling right now to, to get the longstanding agenda. There have been high-profile shootings recently. The laws that the libs are proposing right now to ban the AR-15, for instance, would not have stopped any of these shootings that occurred recently. They wouldn't have stopped any of the shootings in recent years. Not just the ones in the past few weeks, but the past 10 years, 20 years. Wouldn't have stopped any of them. And, and the smart libs know that. But they're exploiting the pain of the people who, are, who were affected by the shootings and the people who are sympathetic to those who were affected, to try to push their longstanding gun agenda. 
Same thing here. We're told that this, the, the overruling of Roe v. Wade is an attack on pregnant women. This is an attack on women's health care. You want to talk about an attack on women's health care, you keep firebombing pregnancy clinics. How about you, you, you don't want to attack women's health care, stop firebombing the pro-life pregnancy centers. Now there are pregnant women who cannot get care. Se- several, several places right now, pregnant women cannot get care, not because the court is going to overrule Roe v. Wade, but because leftist terrorists are bombing them in, in Buffalo, in Madison, elsewhere. That's why. But they don't really care about the pregnant women. They just care about their sacrament of abortion. And if pregnant women need to be heard, if disproportionately poor, disproportionately minority, disproportionately underserved women are being hurt by that, well, so what? You got to crack some eggs to make an omelet. These days, it's very expensive to crack eggs to make an omelet, but that's the way that they're thinking. They're th- okay, the, the actual pregnant women get hurt, but my longstanding agenda, that gets to be advanced. And you won't, you won't hear about it in the media, other than on this show and on a handful of other conservative outlets. It's a total double standard. There was a story that came out the other day. Did you see this story in Yahoo News? Uh, but there were, it was being reported in lots and lots of places. Witness says, police shot an unarmed pregnant woman five times and cuffed her. Wow, those racist, awful, disgusting, terrible police shooting an unarmed pregnant woman. I saw that headline popped up. I said, I don't think that's true. I bet there's more to the story. I just reflexively don't believe the media reports. And then what happens? Turns out uh, it's not true. Turns out that uh, the woman is was not pregnant and she wasn't unarmed. She actually had a gun and she was pointing the gun and she had just tried to jack a police car. And so finally, or not a police car, she tried to jack a regular car. The police come up. She's not pregnant. She's got a gun. She's pointing the gun and then the cops fire on her. Totally justified. The headline completely made up, promoted everywhere in the liberal media. Then it turns out it wasn't true. And what happens? Do you get a big, giant correction? No, the story just kind of goes away. Okay, never mind. Moving on. Darn, that's too bad. We thought we had a good one. We thought we had a good excuse to push our agenda, but nah, okay, never mind. We'll get them next time. Don't worry, guys. It's not Even the way that the, the news media are, are used, it's totally instrumental. So you'll, and it's the same sort of thing we're talking about with energy, with women's rights, with, with all sorts. It's, it's all just instrumental. You sometimes hear of the news media calling themselves, we're the, we're the fourth estate. Oh yes, we're the brave, intrepid journalists who are out there standing, speaking truth to power. No, they're, they're instrumental. They're tools. They're used to advance the leftist agenda. And so when, when a story does that, they run with it. And when a story doesn't do that, they kill it. That's why we try to tell the other stories. That's why we try to tell important stories. That's why we try to get to the, the question, the, the most important question of our age. What is a woman? Out now, if you want to watch Matt's movie, What is a Woman? You've got to be a Daily Wire subscriber. Terror on the Prairie, the big movie that is uncanceling Gina Carano. It's got Nick Searcy in it. I can't wait. That's premiering very, very soon. You want to watch it? You got to become a Daily Wire member. Head on over to dailywire.com slash subscribe. Join us. Get exclusive access to our entire library of content and, and help us push back against the extremely corrupt liberal establishment media. We need your help to do it. We're so supportive, or we're so appreciative, rather, of those of you who have supported us so far. We'll be right back with a lot more. In case you had forgotten, it's Pride Month. I don't think you could forget that it's Pride Month because there are rainbows covering just about every single inch of this country of ours. You, it is inescapable. The corporations, the media, the entertainment, the government, it's all, sports now, it's all covered in the rainbow. Well, what happens if you disagree with the rainbow? I disagree with the rainbow. I'm Catholic and we, don't, we, we oppose the rainbow. We don't think that men can secretly become women. The uh, Christians have a particular view of sexual ethics. Jews, for that matter, do as well. Muslims do as well. Certain ag- agnostic people do as well. They disagree. Not to be cruel, not to say we hate you, you awful people. We just say, look, that's not our view 
of human nature and sexual ethics in our relationship to our bodies and one to another and to our God. So we disagree with that. But you're not allowed to disagree with that anymore. There were some baseball players who just decided that they weren't going to wear the pride flag on their uniform. They, didn't, they just didn't want to wear the rainbow. They felt that it contradicted their religious belief. And ESPN, this woman at ESPN, Sarah Spain, blew a gasket. Tampa pitcher Jason Adam to the Tampa Bay Times. Hard decision because ultimately we all said we want is them to know that they are welcome and loved here. But when we put it on our bodies, I think a lot of guys decided that it's just a lifestyle that maybe, not that they look down on or anything or differently, it's just that maybe we don't want to encourage if it, we believe in Jesus who's encouraged us to live a lifestyle that would abstain from that behavior. Sarah Spain, how does that all come off to you? Pride is about inclusion, so you don't love them and you don't welcome them if you're not willing to wear the patch. And calling it a lifestyle reveals to me that you've done not even a modicum of research or understanding on this topic. It's what tends to happen when a privileged class isn't affected by things. This is not just about baseball. That religious exemption BS, which is used in sport and otherwise, also allows for people to be denied health care, jobs, apartments, children prescriptions, all sorts of rights. And so we have to stop tiptoeing around it because we're trying to protect people who are trying to be bigoted from asking for them to be exempt from it when the very people that they are bigoted against are suffering the consequences. When you say trying to be bigoted. They're trying to use religious exemptions to affect the opportunities, services, uh, uh, available resources for people who are LGBTQ+. It's BS, those religious exemptions. You don't have a right to your religious exemption. Wear the rainbow patch. That's where we are. We went from tolerance, hey, come on, it doesn't affect you. Just let people be people, let them do what they want to do, to you will wear the patch or we will ostracize you from society. We went from, hey, you know, let people who are a little quirky kind of maybe explore what they, to drag the kids to the drag show. Drag the kids to drag night. That's what they were calling that disgusting event in Dallas. Drag the kids to a gay bar so that they can put dollar bills in the thongs of of deviant men dressed up as women in front of a sign that says it isn't going to lick itself. That's, that's, and, and we got there in about six years. It wasn't a very long time. She says, this woman is making the argument that you, you can't tolerate intolerance. That tolerance means that you've got to wear the patch. And that if you refuse to wear the patch, you're not being tolerant of the rainbow, of LGBT. And so that should not be tolerated. That you are a bigot. It is not bigotry to oppose LGBT, the rainbow. That is not bigotry. Bigotry is the unreasonable attachment to a belief or a cause. Opposing transing the kids is not unreasonable. Transing the kids is unreasonable. The transgender activists, the LGBT radicals, they are the bigoted ones. That woman, Sarah Spain on ESPN, she is a bigoted one. And she is a bigoted one specifically because the beliefs of those baseball players are reasonable beliefs. They are much more reasonable beliefs than the drag the kids to drag night, it isn't going to lick itself perverts. Those are un- the beliefs held by those people, the beliefs held by Sarah Spain and the, the rainbow Gestapo, those are unreasonable. Okay, you will comply. You will wear the patch. Put the patch on. That is, that is what's unreasonable. It's not unreasonable to say, hey, men and women are made for one another. And when a man and a woman love each other very much, they come together and they get married and they make baby. And we shouldn't drag baby to the 21 plus gay bars and have them put dollar bills in the G-strings of weirdos. That's, so it's a reasonable view to say no to that. But the, the point that she's making that is really important is there's no such thing as total tolerance. This is actually a, a, a central point in my book, which is out yesterday in paperback, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. This book, uh, there it is. Wow, I missed my old bell. It's so good to have that bell back. Uh, the book hit number one is a national bestseller when it came out last year. It's old enough copies that now we've got a paperback coming out. The, the point of this book was not just to own the libs, though certainly enjoyed owning the libs a fair bit in the book, but also to correct some conservatives here who seem to believe that we can just tolerate everything. They're the sort of people who, who say, 
you know, whatever happened to the tolerant left? There is no such thing as total tolerance. Because, because either a man can become a woman or a man can't become a woman. And, and those two beliefs are mutually exclusive. And whichever belief a society holds, you're going to have to exclude the other belief because you can't simultaneously hold contradictory beliefs. That violates the law of non-contradiction. You can't, you can't tolerate everything. That's what that woman is saying. If we're going to tolerate LGBT, if we're going to be truly tolerant of transing the kids, then we actually can't tolerate Christianity or Judaism or Islam or normal traditional standards. We can't. We have to pick one. And I, for one, call me a radical. Call me crazy. I think the old standards make a whole lot more sense than drag the kids to drag night. But the radicals on this front are getting much, much more aggressive. There's a senator in California, state senator in California, Scott Weiner, all nature is but art unknown to thee, all chance direction which thou canst not see. His name is Weiner. Scott Weiner suggested in response to a Texas representative who, who uh, proposed banning drag shows for minors, this guy, Senator Weiner, suggested uh, making drag shows for kids mandatory. He said, quote, this guy, this Texas rep, just gave me a bill idea. Offering Drag Queen 101 as part of the K-12 through curriculum attending drag queen story time will satisfy the requirement. Now, this guy, Scott Weiner, uh, this is not his first time proposing this creepy sex stuff for kids. This is the guy who was pushing for easing the sex offender requirements for people who sodomize minors. This, this was a big story, what was it, about a year or two years ago. He said, California thinks that the law is just too harsh on people who sodomize minors, and we need to go a little lighter on them. That's fair. So not surprised that Wiener would push this kind of thing. Uh, but now he's saying we, we need to make this a part of the curriculum. And I, I get why he's doing it. I get why he's doing it. He thinks that he's owning the conservatives here. This guy gave me an idea. I know what we're going to do. We're going to make this part of the curriculum. Yeah, I know. I know you're going to do that. That's what you've told us you're going to do for years. Yeah, you're totally you're going to totally own the conservatives by proving that we were right the entire time about your intentions. Yeah, of course you were going to do this. Because a society has to have standards and taboos because a society can't tolerate everything. And so, if we are going to cr- cultivate a society in which people are open to drag shows for everybody, then we need to to do it. We need to cultivate that from a young age. We need to educate people into that idea. So of course it's going to end up in the education system. It has to. This this is one area where I think the the conservatives have made kind of a mistake when they're talking about the, the don't say gay bill, quote unquote, in Florida, the parental rights and education bill. Some conservatives have tried to find a middle ground here. The, the libs say we need to indoctrinate the kids into LGBT and put them on puberty blockers. And the, the people in the middle, the people to the right of them, will sometimes say, well, look, I, it's not about gay or straight. It's just don't talk about sex at all. Don't just get it, get that, but that's, that's actually not possible. And, and the libs will point out, no, that's not, you can't, that's not possible because s- sexuality is very important to human nature. So when that kindergarten teacher reads the book to his class or her class, more likely about mama bear and ba- and daddy bear and baby bear all having dinner together and eating a bowl of porridge, that is a kind of sexual lesson. You're talking about what family looks like, what the relationship between the sexes look like. No one has a problem with the teacher reading that book to her class in kindergarten. We would have a problem if the book were about Mama Bear and Daddy Bear and Daddy Bear's boyfriend and Daddy Bear's boyfriend's thruple and his S&M club that he goes to on Thursday nights. We would have a problem with that. They're, they're both talking about sexual relations or, or at least sexual identities. The issue is not that someone is saying anything about sex. The issue is what people are saying. The issue is the substance. And that's, that's what this guy understands. That's what the libs understand. And that's why the real conservative position here is, no, there actually is a difference. And we as a society have the right to say that certain behaviors are normative or normal and should be encouraged. And other behaviors, maybe we shouldn't be cruel to people because they engage in those behaviors. Maybe we, sh- maybe we shouldn't even outlaw those behaviors, but at least we can discourage them. At least we can say they're not normal. At least we, should, we don't need to put them front and center. At least we don't need to force everyone to put on the, 
the rainbow flag and, and cheer along, along the sidelines for transing the kids. We don't have to do that. We can say that it's normal for a man and a woman who love each other very much to go get married. And they should get married. It's good for them to get married. And it's good to, to create children within that marriage. And there are certain behaviors here that are good. We don't need to be mean to people who don't, who don't quite fit that mold. But a society has a right to standards. Every society is going to have standards anyway. It's just now the standards we're getting are drag the kids to drag night. It isn't going to lick itself. Does anyone want to live in that society? Do, do gay guys want to live in that society? No, not, not relatively right-minded gay guys. Do, do, do the, the only people who want to live in that society are the political radicals, and there's no reason we should give it to them. We need to be able to say no. There is a North Carolina mayor who just finally stood up, and he said, no, we're going to cut it out with the weird drag queen stuff. There's a mayor in North Carolina who said on Saturday that a, a, the LGBT Pride Drag Queen Story Hour event has been canceled after backlash from his constituents. This is Apex Mayor Jacques Gilbert. Wow, that's a very, very cosmopolitan kind of name for the middle of North Carolina. Uh, he is former captain of the Apex Police Department. He said the event was shut down because the community didn't want it. Now he's catching pushback from the radical left. The, the community has a right to say no to Drag Queen Story Hour. Notice, the community didn't say no to the Pride Parade. The community has every right to say, we don't want a Pride Parade. We don't want that. We don't, that's not, doesn't represent our views here, and so we don't want that. We're not being mean to people. We're not tarring and feathering people or sending them out of the community, but we don't want people dancing around the streets in leather and rainbows. We just don't, but they're not, they're not saying that. They're saying, no, have the Pride Parade. They're not even saying no drag queens. You, they can even have drag queens, apparently. This, is, this community is so liberal, so leftist, so open-minded by the, by the standards of pretty much every society everywhere in the world. Where they drew the line was, don't bring the kids specifically to watch the drag queens dance around and read them stories. Just leave the little kids out of it. And that, that's too much for the radical left. That's how far the Overton window has shifted. That's how far back into the corner conservatives have been pushed. That now the fight we're having is, hey, maybe wait till the kid turns seven to trans him, to expose him to drag queen shows. Hey, maybe don't, maybe don't let the kid go into the it's not going to lick itself show until he gets a li- just a little tiny bit older. Do you realize how much ground we've lost there? The, and the reason we've lost that ground is because we've been duped by the left into believing that we don't have any right to articulate standards. Those guys are articulating standards. Why aren't we allowed to do it? They're articulating bad standards. Why can't we articulate good standards? If you want, if you want to know how we can try to reverse that course, you can read it in my book, my book that came out last year and then just came out again. It just came out again yesterday. There it is, Speechless, Controlling Roots, Controlling Minds, available wherever fine Number one national bestsellers that have been snubbed by the New York Times bestseller list are sold. We've got to protect ourselves. And speaking of protecting the public, the CDC is back to fear-mongering, not about the coronavirus, not even about the Omicron or the Betacron or the Delta or the Epsilon or no. They're worrying us about monkeypox. There are now 31 confirmed cases of monkeypox in 13 states in the United States. Monkeypox can be a very serious illness, though there are some strains that appear to be less serious. The CDC is suggesting that right now people avoid eating or preparing meat from wild game, bush meat, so no eating monkeys. Don't go out there and get any monkeys in the trees and cook them up. Uh, They're suggesting we avoid using products derived from wild animals from Africa creams, lotions, and powders. It's not in my medicine cabinet right now, but for some people, maybe it is. You go to some shaman to find some weird aphrodisiac out of a rhinoceros horn or something. They're saying maybe don't, don't necessarily do that. And then the CDC said that maybe people should wear a mask. They said, wearing a mask can help protect you from many diseases, including monkeypox. And then right when the CDC posted that, some careful, detail-minded conservatives saw it. And they said, wait a second, the CDC wants us to put the masks on. This time it's because of monkeypox. And then the CDC took it down. It was up and it was down and they're moving the goalposts. 
They're saying, darn, COVID's over. We can't control them through COVID anymore. Maybe we'll do it through monkeypox. We're not going to tell them about where monkeypox started, by the way. Uh, definitely not this month. We're not going to talk about any parties in Belgium or Spain. It might, might be a little politically incorrect to mention where monkeypox started. No, no, no. But we are. We're, can, can, will you put the mask on? No, you're still not. You don't want to wear the mask? Okay, we'll try to. But it's all it's all a power struggle. You're now hearing about another surge in coronavirus. The, the Biden administration is still fighting to make you wear the mask on airplanes again. This stuff is not going away. There are, there are pretty basic preventative measures you can take to avoid the monkeypox. If you, if you, general, if you avoid orgies in Belgium, you're probably going to be okay. But the CDC is not, not saying that because it's, it's all just a way to fear monger. 13 cases, or I'm sorry, 31 cases in 13 states. We've been hearing about monkeypox for weeks now. Good. That's good news. It sounds like it's not a big pandemic. Okay, great. Wonderful. But they're always just waiting a little bit more to keep you on your toes, to, to keep that power for themselves. Oh, the Delta's back. Shut down your business again. Oh, you got to vote by mail again. Oh, you're going to, it's, it's all a way of reordering society. It's instrumental, just like every other political obsession that the libs have. Speaking of protection, there's a, a new scare poll out from CBS News that says that, look, we, we want to solve gun violence in this country, but we've got a big problem. It's those damned Republicans, 44% of whom say that mass shootings are just inevitable. And so do they feel powerless or do people believe they can do something about it? The good news is people think this is preventable. You get big majorities that say it can be stopped. It can be prevented. And it's not something that we have to accept. Now, there is a quarter who says that, unfortunately, this may be something that we have to accept in a free society. And I do want to point out uh, some partisan difference here. There is bipartisan view that it can be prevented, but there are four in 10 Republicans who do say that it may be something we have to accept. And that partisan difference is going to cut through a lot of this, Margaret. It's those damned Republicans, those awful Republicans. The whole reason, of course, that they're releasing this report in this poll is to paint Republicans as being perfectly fine with the mass killing of kids. That's why. But they're not willing to do the things that would, in a very practical way, lower the risk of kids getting killed. It's these Republicans, they won't ban the AR-15. They say it's inevitable. Can you believe that? They value their AR-15s more than they value your kids, those awful Republicans. Banning the AR-15 is not going to stop mass shootings. There is zero evidence that that will happen. And in fact, there's a lot of evidence on the other side that that probably wouldn't have that effect. Actually, when Rubio made a similar point back in 2015, even the Washington Post admitted he was right, that the major gun control proposals from the left would not have stopped any of the major mass shootings especially when we're talking about shootings that take place in a confined space. There's no, like like a school, like a classroom, there's no evidence that that banning one particular kind of rifle, which is used in relatively few killings per year, relatively few homicides per year, would, would stop things when people, would stop the massacres when people could just use a handgun, especially at close range. There's no evidence of that at all. How could you, I, I don't think that mass shootings are inevitable. Certainly not in schools, but how could you, what could you do to lower the risk of mass shootings? It's pretty simple. Lock the doors at the school. Pretty simple. Have armed guards at the school. Pretty simple. Allow teachers who are legal firearm owners to carry weapons. Pretty simple. These mass shootings tend to happen in gun-free zones. I don't want to sound like I'm just reciting Republican talking points, but on on this case, let's say, let's say you're a Democrat and you're listening and you hate the Republicans and you hate the NRA and you hate Ted Cruz and you hate Donald Trump or whatever. Put that aside for a second. Do you think a shooter is more likely or less likely to successfully shoot up a school if all the doors except for one are locked? Do you think that makes it more likely or less likely? Obviously less likely. We all would agree with that. Do you think... A, a mass shooter is more or less likely to shoot up a school if there's a, an armed guard there or two armed guards. Probably makes it less likely, right? 
or is in the school. Let's go even further. Do you think a mass shooter is more likely or less likely to shoot up a school or even to try to shoot up a school if he doesn't even know how many armed people are in the school? He could turn the corner and some teacher goes and pops him off. You just don't know. Obviously less likely. So there, there are practical steps that the Democrats could take right now to dramatically lower the risk of mass shootings, especially school shootings. But they won't do it because they don't really care about preventing the shootings. They care about pushing the same long-standing, mostly unrelated gun proposals that they've had for 30 years. And they, are, they only pretend to care about the shootings because it's a tool, because it's an instrument to get what they've wanted for a long time. This is no different than their plays anywhere else on the economy. And their plays are, are not particularly popular right now. It's failing on virtually every front, but they are playing the long game. Their bet is that if they just keep plugging away at this, harder and harder and consistently and longer and longer and longer. Eventually, even if they get some short-term losses, they're going to win the long-term battle. They're, they're seeing the victory more clearly than the conservatives are. Maybe conservatives need our own vision and our own courage and our own stamina for a long-term political fight. Maybe that would put us in a stronger position to capitalize on the absolute failures of the American left. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. See you tomorrow. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Ben Davies. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Supervising producer, Mathis Glover. Production manager, Pavel Vidovsky. Editor and associate producer, Danny D'Amico. Associate producer, Justine Turley. Audio mixer, Mike Coromina. And hair and makeup by Cherokee Hart. The Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2022. Hey there, this is John Bickley, Daily Wire editor-in-chief and co-host of Morning Wire. On today's episode, Californians take to the polls for key votes, Wall Street wades into the abortion debate, and a massive caravan of migrants makes its way to the U.S. southern border. Join us and get the facts first on the news you need to know with our show, Morning Wire.